What's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of AWS Tutorial. And today I'm going to show you how to build a workflow using AWS Step Functions and integrate that with Lambdas and the DynamoDB. But before we get into the details, let's talk about what exactly AWS Step Functions are. So it's basically a service that allows users to, to build a workflow to connect different components that make up a distributed system or a data pipeline or other things. And in the workflow, you can specify the direction of the execution based on what happened in the previous step. So that way your application can become dynamic depending on the user actions. And the old way of defining such a workflow in step functions is using something called Amazon States Machine that is in JSON format that looks like this. It's not very complicated, but it's gonna take some time for beginners to get up to speed and you have to read some documentation on it as well. So that doesn't sound very convenient. But what we're gonna to do today is to use the new feature that AWS has called Workflow Studio, which makes things a lot easier. So in the center here, you have a graphical representation of what the workflow is. And then on the left side, you can select different types of actions or flows. For example, you can choose a Lambda function or you can choose SNS for some of the components. And then obviously you have other things to choose from as well. It integrates with a lot of services on AWS. So it's very powerful and convenient. And then you can also select the, the flow decisions, whether you want to make a choice Let's say that if the user says yes, you're going to execute this yes lambda function. And then if the user says no, you're going to execute this no lambda function. And you can just drag and drop the component into the flow chart. So it's very convenient. And what we're going to build today is a pretty simple application or a flow chart on step function. We're going to simulate a situation where we give an offer to our customer. And depending on what action the customer takes, we're going to have different flows in the flow chart. For example, if the customer accepts the offer, we're going to execute the Lambda function to process the offer to fulfill it. But if the customer declines the offer, we're going to execute the DynamoDB put item execution to update our database so that we don't bother this customer anymore. And then if the customer did not do anything, let's say that they did not open the email or they did not accept or declined it, we're just going to wait, let's say 30 days and then we're gonna send the offer to the customer again, just to remind them this is still available. So this is a pretty simple flowchart, but it has all the necessary components in it to help you build a foundation. So you know how to integrate that with the Lambda functions and DynamoDB or other things in the future as well. So without further ado, let's get to it. All right, so right now I'm on the homepage of the AWS console and step number one is to create two Lambda functions and the DynamoDB table for executions. Because remember in our workflow, we have three different branches depending on the customer's decision on the offer. In the first one, process offer is a Lambda function. In the second branch, resend offer is also a Lambda function. And then in the third branch, update database, that is obviously a database that we're gonna use DynamoDB for. So let's create the two Lambda function first. Hit create. Give it a name, plus its offer. I'm just gonna use Node.js, but you can use other languages as well if you want to. And then I just let it create a basic Lambda function row. And then create. Okay, so that is done. And now let's create another one. And that is send offer. Do the same thing here. Okay, so that is done as well. And now let's create our DynamoDB table. Hit create. Give it a name. I'll just call it offers table, but you can call it whatever you want. Partition key. Um, I'm just gonna use account ID, leave it as a string. And for simplicity, I'm just gonna leave the sort key blank. I'm not gonna use it. And then leave everything else default. Hit create. And while that's being created, we're gonna go back to the Lambda functions and write out the uh, Lambda code to process our input message. 
So the first thing first, we're going to log out what the uh, event object is. We're going to stringify it. Let's also console out something like this. And then in the event, we're going to extract the account ID and the action that the customer takes. And the event is going to be constructed by us uh, in the demo. So I'm going to show that to you later. But right now, let's just extract that directly from the event object. And here we can cancel lock out something like user has accepted the offer let's fulfill it or fulfill the offer and then normally right here is where you call the uh, fulfillment api in the back end to actually fulfill the offer but in this demo obviously we're not going to have that i'm just going to cancel the log but this is where you're going to call the actual api for the fulfillment and to return object we can do something like user uh it's gonna be account id and then the action that is taking uh it's like the decision something like that but you can return whatever you want um so that should be everything so we hit deploy and then for the send offer lambda we're gonna do something similar so i'm just gonna copy this and instead of saying that the user has accepted the offer, um, remember this flow is gonna be the customer ignores our offer, didn't do anything, so we're, we're gonna remind him or her. So we're gonna say something like the user has not accepted or declined the offer. Let's remind or let's resend the offer again. And then right here is where you call the send email API to, to resend the email or resend the offer. And that can be kept the same. Hit deploy. Okay, so that is done. Okay, so now the two lambda functions and the DynamoDB table is done. We can, we can build out our step function to integrate them together. But before we can do that, we need to create an IAM role for the step function to use so that it can have access to all these resources. So I'm going to type in IAM and then hit rows, hit create. It's a service row. And then underneath here, we're going to choose step function. Check this button here, hit next. So by default, it gives you the uh, Lambda execution row. But remember, other than the two lambda functions, we also have a DynamoDB table that we have we need access to. Uh, so we're gonna add that later. But let's create this first. Give it a name. I'll just call it step function test row test row. Hit create. Okay, so that is done. And now let's attach the DynamoDB policy to it as well. Is that one? We can do add permission, attach policy. We're going to type in Dynamo. Hit enter the search. And we're just going to give it full access for demo purposes. Hit attached. And now it has the policies for both the Lambda functions and the DynamoDB table. So that is all set. And it says the policies were successfully attached. Let's double check. Okay, and now we can finally create a step function to connect everything. So I'm going to type in step function. And then hit get started. And remember in the intro, I said that this is the original or the old way of creating it. But we're not going to do it this way. We're going to do it the new way. So I'm going to click here. To use the... Um, Workflow Studio. So I'm gonna select standard. Um, if you wanna compare the differences or 
to see what the differences are between the two types you can click here and then uh, read through it but for the demo I'm just gonna choose a standard hit next and that brings us to the workflow builder page so remember in our diagram we say that we have a decision and then we're gonna have three branches so let's build that out okay so the first thing that we need is a choice we're gonna name it offer decision or custom decision and then for rule number one we're gonna edit it and this is going to be when the customer accepts the offer. So the variable name that we're going to use is uh, decision. And that needs to be in this format. And then we're going to set it to equal to a string. Accept it. Hit saved. And then we can leave the default here. We're going to add another rule to it. Rule number two, we're going to add the condition where the user declines the offer. So when it's equal to declined. Okay, so that is done. And now we're going to add the execution elements here. So we need to go to action. So the first thing is going to be a Lambda function that we're going to connect to our process of a Lambda. Um, so in here, we're going to change the name to be process offer. And in here, we're going to choose the Lambda functions that we just created, which is process offer. And then this is important here. Um, we're going to choose the use state input as payload, which means that whatever we pass in, uh, in here, the decision is going to be used as our event object here in our lambda function and we're just going to use everything the same all the inputs the second one is also a um, lambda function uh, because the user has not accept or declined the offer so we're going to send a reminder to them to remind them that this offer is still available if they're still interested we're going to wait probably because we won't we don't want to spam them so for the wait time we said that 30 days, but uh, for this demo, I'm just going to do 10 days. And then in here, we're going to add a new state to it. And then we're going to have a Lambda execution to resend the offer. Resend offer. And we're going to choose the Lambda function that we just created. Send offer. And same thing here, just use the same input as the payload. And then lastly, we're going to um, update our database if the customer declines the offer. Because if they declined it, we, we know that they're not interested. So we're not going to bother them again. That means we need to update our database to reflect that. That means we need to add the DynamoDB operator over there. So we're going to scroll down to the DynamoDB section. Click on it. And then... We need to do a put item operation on it. So we're going to drag and drop it here. For the name, uh, let's just call it update database. And then for the table name, uh, I believe we call it office table. So let's copy and paste that. And then for the items, this is what we want to put in our database. So the first attribute name that we're going to uh, update or add an item to is account ID. And uh, we're going to take the account ID from the offer decision as an input. And for that, the syntax is a dot dollar sign. That signifies this is a uh, variable instead of a constant. So same thing here, account ID. So what that means is that this is a string type and it's a variable type. And what that variable is, is that whatever we pass in from the input that, uh, that says account ID. So we're going to take that and put that into account the account ID column. And then next, we're probably going to do a do not notify column. 
and the do not notify column is gonna be um, boolean. Am I gonna set it to be true? Because do not notify if it's true, we're not gonna notify the customer again. So that should be everything. So hit next. So that is saved. So now we have the flowchart set up. And then hit next. And uh, give it a name, I just call it my test state machine. But you can call it whatever you want. And then for the row, we're gonna choose the IAM row that we just created, which is that one. And leave everything as default, and then hit create. Okay, seems like it's done. And now we are ready to test it. So let's start a uh, execution. Uh, so this is the simulated input. I think we said that we're gonna pass in a uh, account ID, which is a string, let's call it one, two, three, four, five, six. And then decision, let's test out the accept decision first. Hit start execution, it's starting. And as you can see, if the offer or if the customer accepts the offer, it goes to this branch to execute everything and it's successful. Um, so now if we go to the Lambda function, click on monitor, we should be able to see some logs in CloudWatch. And that is the execution. And now we can see the logs that says the event message received, and that is the payload that we pass in, that's exactly the same. And uh, it's logging something like user has accepted the offer, let's fulfill that. And in the next line in the real world situation that would call the uh, fulfillment API to fulfill the offer for the customer. And now let's go back to the step function and uh, simulate the decline offer. Hit start. And now it should go to the right branch because we uh, because the customer declines the offer. And now it should update our database to say that that account um, has declined the offer. We should stop notifying it. Uh, let's go to explore items. Yep, so account ID is that and then do not notify is true. And that's what we set as the input. Uh, let's do it one more time with a different account ID so we can see it updated. new execution, something like that. Same thing here. So if I go back here, hit refresh, I should see two items here. Yep, that is right. And now lastly, let's test out the default branch where the customer ignores our, our offer or email or missed it for some reason. Uh, so we're gonna uh, execute this branch. So new execution. Let me just do ignore something like that. And you can see that being executed in real time is waiting for 10 seconds right now. And after that is done, it uh, went to the next step to execute the Lambda function to resend the offer. And now if we go back to this Lambda function, hit monitor, view logs in CloudWatch, and we should be we should be able to see the logs for that ex execution. There is it. And then event message received. That is the payload that we pass in. And it says something like the user has, has now accepted or declined the offer. Let's resend the offer again. So it seems like everything's working now. So that is a pretty simple example, but it has all the necessary ingredients or elements in it to give you a really good foundation to explore furthermore by yourself. Um, so this is it, everyone. I hope you have learned something. And if you like this video, I hope you can give it a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next video.